Okay, so we are we are gathered for another sculpture forum, um, and uh, we have been to see an exhibition at the um, Scoto Gallery uh, of the work of Olu Amoda. And uh, we gathered via Zoom. I am Garth Evans. We I am with the usual Brant Junso and Jock Ireland. And we're joined on this occasion uh, by the extraordinary Lee Tribe. And we invited Lee to um, join us for this show because it seemed in some ways right up his alley uh, in that it is work made in steel by an African sculptor. And Lee is an authority on uh, traditional African sculpture and has a pretty stunning collection of his own. Um, so we, we, I thought, um, and, and we all thought that he, he, you know, he might be able to help us make sense of this show. I, it was Jock Ireland. Uh, Jock, thank you for drawing our attention to this show. I would not have seen it. Uh, uh, had you not said we should look at it and talk about it. And I'm very glad you did, because it, to me, um, it, 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 was, uh, it, was, it was exciting, stimulating, challenging, um, and raised a lot of questions uh, in my mind, and, and I'm not even sure I was confusing, not even sure that I can articulate the questions it raised, but um, I'm, I'm going to stop now and, and open it up. And do, do you want to start, Lee, or anybody? Well, there, there is a, a moment you just said something that I also find myself um, dealing with, and that is it brought up a lot of questions, and instinctively I wanted to put them in one bag, but as I looked on, um, the questions kept arising and I'm not sure that I have the right answers and the, but it did open up this other side um, which was a lot more positive so I was wrestling with that and I was also when I went there I expected to um, find a, a greater um, what can you say um, sense of the older traditional African sculpture. It's in there, but it's, to me, you know, it, it, it just seems, this really seemed to me to begin from what Picasso did early on in the early 1900s. And the, the other thing that was bothering me was, Having been in various steel workshops, et cetera, all over um, England, certainly, and some here too, um, and in China when I was there, um, there's always some sculptures that are like this. You know, it's something that one or two people get together in the workshop or just mess around with the material, and they're not necessarily trained as sculptors, some not at all, but they've seen stuff and they make these little figures or creatures, you know, they were making them out of nails for a while and that became quite popular as a decorative object thing that was still a sculpture. And that was making me um, uncomfortable to begin with about these work, but there's no doubt that is, this guy is a very talented in certain areas, sculptor. He's got a great um, sense of, uh, I'd say line, but the postures that he um, out of the material of the figures, I think are really quite poetic at times. So there was this up and down of the scales. One, the stuff I'd seen and it seems inevitable and has probably gone on since people have been putting things together, is they put together a little human figure. And the question is, is it, where is it in sculpture for me? I'm not sure. So does that give us something to chew on? 
Yes, it does. Um, Jock Grant, you, Jock, you, you, you drew our attention to this show. What, what, what was it that made you think we would find something to talk about? Um, obviously, we do find something to talk about, but um, may not may not be what you thought we would. Uh, well, no, and I. Well, first, I just want to credit um, Kathy Leibowitz with sort of introducing me to this gallery. Um, and Kathy is a studio school alumna and a terrific artist herself. And uh, she had a show at this gallery. The The show left me excited and I kind of, I, I it's not the right way to say it, but to say that the sort of future of sculpture is here, I had that feeling. And uh, it, it's not that I feel that tomorrow Olu's going to be some kind of art world celebrity, but I felt that the sort of awkward engagement with the figure uh, is something that's that's got a future that I believe in, that I I'm get excited by. It has a feeling of of newness and newness with a future. Um, and steel sculpture was in a way new in the '60s, and I felt that I had a, it. I felt that it had a future. But this is different and different with uh, a f good feeling of newness for me. Uh, that's at least my initial uh, uh, response. I, 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 when I, Lee talks about little figures being made out of nails and stuff. And it, it, that little figure business uh, is not only part of the steel sculpture tradition, but it, it's, uh, you know, clay sculpture from the beginning of time uh, has, uh, you know, involved little figures, figurines. Uh, and then, you know, I kept thinking about Rona looking at these little, uh, uh, Olu's little figures. I have Smith on my mind because the, the biography's coming out. And as a reflex, it, you know, looking at sculpture, you know, welded, forged, bent, um, I think immediately of, Picasso and Gonzalez and Smith and Carroll and, and Melvin Edwards. But I think really um, these pieces really don't have a thing to do with that. They come out of something else altogether. And I think Jock's observation is really apropos that um, it really is a matter of cobbling together a little person out of, in this case, metals. And some of that impulse is really visible and affecting. The, the artists, oddly enough, I think that I would most associate with what I saw is uh, Daumier. The, the element of um, everyday life affectionately and wryly observed in uh, single characters and, and groups. And I also have this sense that as um, Lee was saying that these things are of a genre going on at this moment all over, uh, you know, a number of continents, a number of shops, and it's a, it's a thing that I'm, I'm not particularly, I mean, I'm not totally unaware of it, of course, but I'm not particularly conversant with it and feel like there's, 
there's a kind of a, a conversation going on there uh, that I'm overhearing and I don't hear every nuance. I don't even really know um, the ongoing subject, the genre, the reference, and I'm and and I'm I'm hearing it overheard as if from the next table, the next room, and uh, that reminds me of our experience at the um, Ellis Cabrera exhibition, right? A similar sensation of a certain familiarity enough to know that what I see is not entirely familiar and that I might well be missing something. I, I mean, I think that's, that, it, that, that seems in some way appropriate. I, I, I found myself, you know, uh, looking at these things on the one hand, as Lee hinted at that they might be somebody who is completely untrained as a sculptor, like, uh, you know, and certainly someone who is not not trained or not not embedded in a kind of Western academic tradition. Um, uh, so in that sense, they could be kind of seen as, you know, the work of what, what people like to call an outsider. Uh, um, and whatever yet, that means. And, yeah, whatever that means. I think, I mean, I take it to mean someone who is not, not lacking, if that's the right word, lacking, uh, uh, you know, a traditional academic training, um, like the one we've all had. Um, uh, and, and in some ways, uh, it raised that kind of question for me, you know, what is that academic training and how valuable is it? And, and you know, because there is, there, it did seem to me that there was a kind of a real freshness and directness and immediacy and energy uh, to this work, a lot of which I did not find myself liking. But at the same time, I had to sort of acknowledge that it, it was, it, it was, in a sense, the real thing. Somebody who seemed to be having some need to urgently make these things. Um, and, and I think, again, as Lee hinted at or said, that, that often what was most captivating was the gesture, the way the figures uh, were po po posed. Um, uh, and, and again, it was not all of them, but, but, but every now and again, I think something was, you know, was, was made present that was remarkable. Um, uh, and you know, but I mean, it, 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 you know, at the same time, I can, I don't know what I think of them. You know, having said that, they are all of that, uh, you know, kind of, um, it, you know, somehow or other. Uh, I, I mean, Jock seemed to think that they sh 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 sort of had had a kind of potential for development and future, and hinted at something that might be, you know extended and, and 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 built on i didn't have that sense at all i i, I felt um you, you know that, it, that they were kind of, it was a body of work that had been made in and i guess it was in fact made in response to experiencing two um plays two dramas that that uh, olu had had seen and that been moved by i assume um, and I don't know the plays, and so I don't know the relationship between that and these works. But but um, the the sense in which they were made, you know, out, out of some strong kind of um, uh, you know need uh, was was felt by me, um, and and. Uh, uh, you know, and and uh, Lee can tell me more. I mean, I again, Lee, you hinted at at, at uh, Picasso, Gonzalez. Uh, yeah, I could see that too. At the same time, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure. You know how easy. I mean, there seems to be a level of skill, a level of. Um, oh, yeah. I guess just, just. 
just you know i mean i, I think when i think of, of of gonzalez i think of extraordinary kind of sensitivity in in welding just like that almost like you feel a sense of touch in the way he melts the steel um and i felt some of that here yeah um i when the brand mentioned smith i if we were looking at that big complex um lots of material rolling around in space the head thing the head with hair the, the, um, oh yeah that's you know lots of inventive use of bits but um I'm, I'm going to say something. It, in the inventiveness, it's also kind of a matter of fact that this will do for this idea of a pair, you know? And maybe that's good. I'm not sure. There's so much I'm not sure about. But when I was looking at that, I actually thought that the that piece in particular was Richard Stankiewicz's um, territory, if you like, rather than Smith or any of the others that were mentioned. Um, and also in the press release, which I had, but now of course I can't find, they make quite a big thing about the, um, the play, the plays, the two plays, made yeah. me very interested to see the plays. And I was looking at the sculptures and you know, they were a moment frozen in, in, in time as they had to be. And I realized that if there are a comment on the play, a commentary on something that happened in the play, they're like a movie still that you would see a week before the film came into the cinemas when I was a kid anyway. Yeah. And you. And so they had that, they carry that moment. But if you didn't read that they were something to do with the play, and two, maybe I'm not big on uh, the theatre, but maybe they're a bit obscure, known by buffs, but not generally. So it would be very hard for me to associate them with um, those plays, but I could see something going on there. Some moment of a woman dancing on a table, for instance, with three men who are identified as soldiers um, or um, the, way, the materials he used identified their character. There were rebel groups and soldiers all in this one bar where they went for the booze and the women um, in the play. And you kind of got a whiff of that, but you didn't, I didn't feel the drama that it might, it might suggest. Um, and I got caught up on that. And then I thought there's a tradition of art depicting myth, Greek myth throughout so in a way that that's valid but you've got to know the myth you understand so i got yeah. tangled up in that thought for quite a long time yeah yeah i just might say that the uh plays are uh, uh there are two plays one by lynn nottage one by wool soyenka Wola Soyenka, I'm not sure of the pronunciation, but there uh, might be unfamiliar to us sort of Western people, but uh, they're big time uh, literary uh, artists. And this, just this weekend, I saw a thing in the New York Times about um, Lynn Nottage, and she's the most uh, well produced or uh, the most produced uh, playwright in America now. Uh, I, again, I'm not familiar with the theater world, but uh, I, I think except for Shakespeare and, uh, and A Christmas Carol, her plays get produced wow. more often in America than any other playwright's plays. And Wol Soyenka is, is a guy who, uh, who won the Nobel Prize back in the 80s. Um, and so they're big time literary people, but not Western, but they are a 
you know, about this post-colonial Africa. It has that uh, uh, feeling of newness and excitement uh, for me, uh, anyway. Um, and and it is it's it the fact that this sculptor is drawing on something literary is nice to me because it, it, that you know I've grown up in this tradition where uh, anything literary about your drawing painting or sculpture is bad and stay away from that but uh, Olugs hasn't sort of heard that story and uh, uh, engages with these plays um, unselfconsciously in a, in a just wonderful way. Yeah, that, that was one of the questions that, to, that I found myself sick pondering um, and still do uh, about, you know, the relationship of these objects to the dramas that inspired them. Um, and you know, and and you know, I I I I I think like the rest of us have to apologize for my ignorance of those dramas, those particular dramas. Um, the 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 you know um, question in my mind was if I were familiar with the with the plays that inspired the works, would the works have you know would I be responding to them differently and in some ways I, I was grateful for not knowing the plays because it, it, it enabled me to engage with the works I think as objects um, and uh, without trying to kind of see them through the lens of uh, you know of, of uh, characters on a stage uh, that, that I had previously witnessed or you know um and and uh, you know I, I i i i think i felt um that the urgency with which they were produced or felt that they were produced was 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 more available to me when i was not kind of identifying them as this person who you know who had that role in the play um what you're saying makes sense to me completely. Uh -huh. uh, um, but the thing is, you, um, uh, or at least I don't want to name the characters and develop, you know, develop some kind of correspondence between this sculpture and that scene in this or that play. Uh, but a way that uh, 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 engages with two words that uh, or at least one word that you've mentioned, uh, Garth, and a word that Lee mentioned. It, Garth, you mentioned um, drama and the fact that there are uh, dramatic uh, sculptures in this show is interesting. And I don't want to go further than just that word dramatic. And then Lee, you mentioned myth and that, uh, that again, I don't sort of care about the particular myth, but that sort of dimension of uh, of the of some of the sculptures is uh, uh, it, 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 Olu's engaging with it in a way that is exciting and has potential, uh, at least in my eyes. Uh, and and it's that that has those words those ideas haven't uh, they've been kind of untouchable for a long time, and the fact that he's touching them he's engaging with them is exciting to me. Mm. Yeah, I think it's important just to mention. I read a, a bit, and um, he did go to art school in Africa. Yeah, in, and in he this... teaches in America. Yeah, right. So he's not an uneducated man. Yeah, sure. Really and, and he's, I think that is. Yeah. And and there's a whole lot of sculptors in Africa uh, making tons of work. Yeah. It, uh, and they're um, all dominated by the kind of stuff that I'm interested in, which is unfortunate. I'd hate to be in their position. 
Well, it, are they collect all... great African sculpture? Yeah, but but they're dealing with that. The, you know, the post-colonial gang. Yeah, but that's interesting. Yeah, well, it, right. It's really, really interesting, really exciting, or at least. So you're I'd... raising you're raising a I'm sorry you're raising a question, Lee. That that that, that I think is is is. One of the things that I I found myself again, you know, what, what, one of the questions I couldn't really articulate, but the, you know, the relationship this work to tradition, um, and to what tradition, um, you know, I mean, I get, I guess, I get, I guess there's an issue of, you know, em embracing or not embracing the kind of um, tradition to which we belong, um, uh, you know, um, going back to 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 in Greece and beyond, uh, or, or you know the the tradition, the traditional works of people from Africa that that I cannot, I guess, Lee will tell me more, but cannot now be made uh, because, in some ways, the rituals for which they were made are fading in their power. Um, yeah. Is that fair? That, well, it, it's certainly um, the truth, except that things are still being made um, in certain tribal groups, probably quite a lot, that are still revered and danced. You can have a piece that was made two weeks ago that was danced and used in a particular ceremony uh -huh. that could be um, more true to the tradition than a piece made 120 years ago. Uh -huh. So that's more, in a way, that's more authentic. And and, and I, I'm, again, I'm assuming, but I imagine there is a certain amount of traditional work made for tourist sale. Oh, that's, you know, the, the floodgates are still open. Yeah. Because that's the more the, it's being introduced in our Western uh, yeah. museums and galleries, the yeah. more people get to see it. And uh, the books are selling still like yeah. crazy. Yeah. the books on African art. And, and one thing that bothers me about that is you tend to see the same classical examples from the, the Muller Museum, uh -huh. for instance. And they have these, and they become the thing everything else aspires to. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of great stuff out there. That, that, um, those pieces are chosen by the Western eye to be the example. Interesting. That bothers me. Interesting. You know, yes. they're not necessarily yeah. seen that well, so, but some of them transcend. And uh, some pieces just transcend. And are, I think in, in anybody's eye, they go beyond. Um, there was a word I wrote down, but I can't see it now. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, no, no, thank you. That is, that is, that is, that is, I'm so, yeah, that is good. Because I found myself wondering, you know, is this work that is is a product of some, you know, really sophisticated attempt to negotiate between those two traditions? Um, and, and uh, you know, and in a sense, therefore, adopting an almost outsider art kind of look. Um, yeah. I don't mean adopting a, a look in that sense of, you know, I mean, but but having to having to kind of go back to something, you know, again, not primitive, not then that's not a negative uh, term, uh, but 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 authentic, a kind of, uh, you know, um, just something that is much more raw and and uh, immediate and. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, having spent much of my life in in art schools teaching, I found myself wondering what would I say to this person if you know they were a student of mine. Mm -hmm. and I, I, I mean, all I could think to say was carry on, you know, just carry on. Yeah. It's, it's exciting. Um, I, you know, I don't want to interfere. Um, I don't know where it's going. I don't know where it's come from. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. sure, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure Olu is familiar with the work of Gonzalez and Picasso and Smith and Stankovic and so on. I, I imagine he is anyway. Um, 
uh, and and somehow that he's having to find a way through all of that to something that is uh, his own. Yeah, um, there's one thing the that did um, um, rise uh, instigate questions in my mind, and that is the materials are all um, pretty, to work with this thickness and this type of bits and pieces, the word scrap was never used. That struck me as interesting. Some of it was repurposed. It's like, like the new term for a second-hand car. And that bothered me a bit, but that was something aside as I was reading. I never saw the word scrap once. Mm -hmm. Which already elevates it, mm. um, but they're the people who are writing about it. His simple device, which is very simple, forging because of the thickness of the material he's using, is to twist the arms. You know that can be done in a couple of minutes. Yeah, and it's and all in there, but it does get a little bit repetitious and samey. But then when you think of all the African sculptures and their size. The, the, it kind of says why these are this size. You know, the traditional African sculpture works within this range. Um, and the thickness of the materials, there's only one piece of material that I could see, apart from the found cogs and things, that was three-eighths of an inch thick. Everything is thinner and, and therefore easier to work. It's very easy way of working steel. You know, Olu, this, he's, we're, I think he went to school in America, and he's, you know, he's not, or there's, we all live in this sort of same world that's getting smaller and smaller, and, and there's, there isn't this, or I, I don't, I, I see the African tradition, or traditions mixing with Western traditions as the new thing. Uh, and it, it's, um, you know, it, he, I guess, could feel kind of oppre oppressed by the history of African art the same way we might feel oppressed by the history of Western art. But, but there's sort of no longer two traditions. We're all living in this really mixed up uh, world. You just said something I've got to respond to. I mean, I don't feel oppressed by the tradition of Western art. I feel, um, you know, uh, I wouldn't say inspired by it, but I feel very much that it is what I depend on uh, in order for what I do to have any possibility of uh, you know, uh, meaning and 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 value and communication, um, uh, and I don't know what you know what what I would do without it. I mean, it seems to be you know uh, anything but an oppression. Uh, it, it it you know it seems to be the bed on which I I kind of live. Um, um, and uh, so I don't, I mean, I don't know whether uh, Olu feels oppressed by tradition of African art or tradition of Western art or um, and whether he is uh, some another, you know, finding a way to negotiate between those traditions uh, or whether he is just, you know, um, in there making these things because because made out of an emotional response i think to something and that's what gives it its power and, and i'm not trying to you, you know you say you're not oppressed by the western tradition and in certain moods i'm sure that's true but your sculpture doesn't look like michelangelo's sculpture and you know you're breaking from it and it's um, and and in the same way that you know the any tradition is always changing, and you know we're living in a 
really big moment of change and transition and you know all uh the traditions are uh are are changing are have opened up uh, yeah i think jock i think i'm i think i'm resistant to to your um trying to trying to i'm not trying to your um uh positing this work uh, uh, in 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 um in a much larger context um uh, um and and i think i'm resistant to that i think this work to me seemed very very particular and, and very direct and very immediate and 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 uh you know and very genuine but i but i i didn't i didn't kind of find myself i mean I, that was one of the dilemmas was what the context to put it in and the context for me was you know an individual's response to some dramas that he had witnessed uh and that moved him and that he wanted to you know to find a way of of art articulating what it was he was feeling as a result of uh having witnessed those dramas and that was it it wasn't it, it isn't it didn't it may well be that you know that somehow you're right and that this is some kind of precursor this work is some kind of pointer some kind of foreshadowing of something uh you know bigger and more important not more important but bigger um than that uh but i'm i'm very resistant to seeing it in that way I, you know i see it as a well yeah i i um i'm sorry you're resistant or whatever but i i'm pretty <laughs> confident about uh uh the the about my enthusiasm for this uh and it, olu himself has made you know this isn't the only stuff he's done no no i understand uh, and, I, and i don't want i mean i certainly don't want to i mean i you know who the hell knows i don't want to argue about this um how about you have the last word uh lee okay i'll try but um I, like, I love the inventiveness of this guy. That's, I think that's something, I don't know if we've really mentioned it, but the way he invents things. But it's all within this, in this show, it's within one small world. And part of me wants to see it moving out of that world too. So that's where, that's where I am. And anyway, I was pleased that I went to this show. In the end, I still remember so many things I've seen in workshops. I can't get past that fact, but, in a, but these are all in a different context. So I need to think a lot more and maybe expand my visual world to other countries, if you like, in this context. All right, is that enough? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs>